How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, we're going to be looking at the AO Lithium Battery. It has a Bluetooth monitor built right into it. So for some people, this might be the budget solution they were looking at for getting into lithium. So let's talk about this battery, the pros and the cons, and who this battery might be for. So to begin with, let's start off with what is different about these batteries. And one of the main differences is that it has a Bluetooth monitor built right into this battery. So you can just pull it up on your phone and see the status of the battery. And it's not that they're the first ones to put Bluetooth in a battery, it's that they're putting it in at that price point. So it's $629 to be able to have a lithium battery, 100 amp hour, 12 volt for $629 all in one package that's just easy to drop in and use in your RV. I'll put a link down in the description that'll take you right to the batteries. So after seeing this, the tests that we put it through, the limitations that it might have, who this might be a good fit for, uh, you'll be able to find that link right down in the description and take you right to the website for the batteries. Now I have two batteries here because I like to be able to test them in a perspective for RVing. So you could get one, you could drop it into your RV and use it like you would just use your normal 12 volt system. Or I also like to set it up on an inverter setup. So I'm doing two to see how it would perform with pulling larger loads. And it's nice to be able to have that monitor in there and you can see exactly what's happening in each battery while we're using it that way. So I did a capacity test. So we had 200 amp hours because we had two batteries and it easily gave us 200 amp hours out of these batteries. So it passed that test. The next test is I wanted to see how it did for its output. They can each put out continuously 100 amps. So we can have 200 amps continuous out for an inverter. And it handled that with no problem. It can handle up to 200 amps out per battery, so 400 amps between the two of these for three minutes. And so I did surge it up there a couple of times using it on the inverter, and it lived up to what I could do with these two batteries with that 3000 watt inverter. If I was gonna set up a system for that inverter, I would prefer to do three batteries. It would be a better fit, but I wanted to stress test these and doing it with two gave me a, an ability to be able to do that. Now back to this Bluetooth monitor is we have two batteries. So when you're looking at it, you can't just look at both batteries at the same time, but you can look at that state of charge. And if you have these tied together in parallel, it's going to be the same state of charge between the two. And you can even see that when we have it connected up to the inverter, you can see the current is very similar coming out of both the batteries, which is what you want in a parallel system. Uh, so they're going to basically have this, the same state of charge between the two of them. But for me, I would prefer if I'm building a battery bank, if I'm doing more than just one battery, yes, this comes in handy and it's nice to see the temperature and the voltage and the current and the watts that are coming out of each battery. But if I'm setting it up as a full battery bank, I would prefer to have a battery monitor. So a shunt, uh, the smart shunt from Victron to be able to tell you what is coming out of your entire battery bank. So that way, if you're pulling 2,500 watts or 2,600 watts out for your inverter, it would be nice to know that and not have to do the math, even though you're times two, times three, times four, depending on how many batteries you have in parallel, it's really not that difficult, but it's really nice to be able to just have it, all that information just in one glance that you can take a look at and know exactly what you're pulling out of your battery bank. Now, another thing about these batteries is they say not to disassemble them, but they make it so easy to open up the top. And so I just took a peek inside. I didn't disassemble the, the battery on the inside, but you can see some of the components. It has grade A cells inside. It has the temperature sensor on the cells like it should be. They actually have a different way of connecting things inside of the battery. This looks different than the majority of the lithium batteries out there. They don't use just the typical cable, but they have these thick conductors in there. And that's one of the reasons we can have such a high output, the 200 amps at three minutes, is because of some of the beefier components that they put in here. So it's a nice build on the inside of this battery and they performed well in all the tests. So using it and testing it, it's been an impressive battery. Looking on the inside, the components and the way that it is put together and built, it's impressive in, in that area too. Now, a couple of things that I noticed that you might want to take into consideration is number one, you can only put two of these in series. So if you're trying to build like a 24 volt bank, uh, you're gonna be limited in what you can do there. You can't make a 36 or a 48 volt bank out of this. It's limited to just the 24 volt series system. Now, now, if you wanted to do a 12 volt battery bank, you're gonna be limited to four batteries. So if you wanted to get into the system of lithium
lithium and then you wanted to grow to say three or 400 amp hours of a battery bank, then this might fit the bill. But if you're thinking I might wanna go five, 600 amp hours of a battery bank, they put the limit on this one at 400 amp hours, four of these batteries put together for a battery bank. So you can build a decent sized system that will work well for the RV, but you wouldn't be able to go above that 400 amp hour, four of these batteries for your system. Now, the one thing that I had to work around for these batteries, hooking it up to an inverter, were the terminals. They're a little bit awkward, but there is a workaround. So if you're just gonna be connecting this up in place of a lead acid, and you're not building an inverter system, uh, the hardware that comes with it and the terminals that are on there are great. I have no problem with them. They're, they're very strong, very easy to use. Um, I like the, the hex head that you have on there with the Phillips on there. It just makes it easy to attach your cables to the battery and be able to tighten them down properly. But when I was connecting up the, the larger 4 aught wire, it doesn't fit in there because there's a little recessed area inside where that terminal is and the 4 aught wire doesn't fit on there properly. So pretty simple, I went and got longer hardware that I can use inside of there. And I had some of this extra copper bar that I had sitting around that I, I used to make my own bus bars out of. Uh, so I just used that scrap, I cut it down and I put it in there as basically a large washer to connect in between that terminal and the 4 aught wires coming in. So between the hardware that I selected and the spacer that I used in there, it ended up working out well. It'd be nice if that terminal was just on the top of the battery so that way it was easy to connect. I get that they recessed it a little bit, helps protect it and makes everything flush. But when you're hooking up this larger cable, uh, you don't wanna have the input just have to be in the one direction. It's nice to be able to connect these batteries up to where you can have the shortest possible route in between the terminals. So I use the copper bar that I cut down to, to fit in there. You could use an L bracket made out of copper so that you can connect to that and kind of extend that terminal up and make it easier to connect onto. So there are options to do that, but those are the limiting factors. All in all, it's a solid battery. It weighs in around 23, 24 pounds. The size is about what we would expect for a drop-in lead acid replacement, uh, but this puts you in the lithium game. You don't have to worry about it self-discharging. If you're worried about temperature, you can look at the temperature on the inside of the battery just by looking at the app. So I think that's gonna do it for the review of this battery. You can see that it's good for a, a moderately sized inverter setup. You can see that it's decent as a, it's really good as a drop-in lithium replacement. Um, and it, I even used it with just a standard RV converter and it did well. It couldn't bring it all the way up to 100%, but it was able to bring it up to, I think around 90% charge. Uh, so it works well for that. And you have that monitor built in. So you know exactly where you're at in that charge cycle. So so a solid option at a decent price. So I think that's gonna do it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it shared some more options that are out there for power for RVing. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.